Welcome to Rideau River Provincial Park. And you guessed it, we're on the Rideau River right now. With our pal Jax. We're gonna check out this little park. We're also gonna head into the town of Kempville nearby and see what we can get into there. Maybe we'll even try a winery. This is a great park if you wanna spend a weekend. So join us as we check it all out. Rideau River Provincial Park is 40 minutes south of Ottawa on the historic Rideau Waterway, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is classified as a recreational park. Well, it is August 30th, 2024. It is the Labor Day long weekend and we are off to Rideau River Provincial Park. And we are taking the 407 again because I looked at the map on Android Auto in Toronto on the 401 is all backed up. So last time we were on the 407 was on our trip to the parks of the St. Lawrence. And uh, I had no idea how much it was gonna cost. Well, we finally got our bill for that. We were registered as a light vehicle, so that's great. So we're paying the same as any car on the road here. We're not paying like a commercial motor vehicle or anything, but still $95. We're going a hundred kilometers each way. It's okay. It's <laughs> you know. okay. So it's 200 kilometers and uh, it costs $95. So that's almost 50 cents a kilometer. So that hurts. Uh, I'm a little cheap and I can't believe that we're paying a toll road, $95. But you know what? I gotta bite the bullet today because uh, it's the long weekend and there's no yeah. way I'm driving on the 401 through Toronto. Don't want any added stress. Yeah. So it's a nice drive here uh, on the 407. Open road, easy driving. It's all right, I guess. It's all right. to the water fill station, fill up, and then head to our site number 53. At Trailer Dump and Fill Station, there is one dump spot, one fill spot. They both have a hose that is not threaded. It's one of those air gaps. And they even have a sign here explaining how it's illegal to try to bypass this air gap system. So don't do it. Um, to turn into here, it's very awkward. It's more than a 90 degree turn, so uh, we couldn't do it. I didn't think I could do the turn. So what we did is we had to go through a loop of the campground to come in from the other way in order to get in here. So we're in now, we're filling up. Looks to be really good water pressure. We'll see how long it takes. We are done filling and that was a 12 and a half minute fill. Good water pressure, but kind of not a great location. No, and you can't even line up here, otherwise you're blocked on the main camp road. It's very teeny tiny. And you go to fill and then you go to dump. Nobody can pass. Everybody's lined up if they want to do one or the other. Yeah. Not, not a really a fan of this type of uh, No, not a good station. Setup. And it's a very difficult angle to get in. You can't even turn in. Yeah, we had to go around a loop and come in from the other way. Yeah, but we're done. On the way to the campsite. Oh, there's your caw caw birds. Oh no. Caw ah, caw. Ah. This is us, site 53. We are two sites away from the road. You might be able to hear some of the traffic go by. It hasn't been too, too bad. Our site is fairly private. It has three walls of trees, uh, so we get partial shade, partial sun. 
Uh, we've had a bit of rain. Our ground cover is dirt and grass, and most of the muddy area is at the entrance of our driveway coming in, and the site itself hasn't been too bad. Let's check out the park. <laughs> this park has two campgrounds for a total of 77 electric and 105 non-electric sites. West Campground has one electric site and 81 non-electric sites and has a barrier-free comfort station with flush toilets and showers. East Campground has 76 electric and 24 non-electric sites. It has a barrier-free comfort station with flush toilets, showers, and laundry facilities. There are two cabins, four prospector tents, and four group sites. There's a day-use area with a comfort station with flush toilets, change rooms, two beaches, picnic tables, a picnic shelter, beach volleyball, and two playgrounds. A third playground can be found in East Campground. A small store can be found in the registration office and there's a dump fill station. There's also one trail called the Shoreline Trail. It is a 1.5 kilometer linear trail rated as easy. There are four group campsites that can accommodate between 40 to 125 people. They can accept tents and trailers. They are non-electric. They have vault toilets, water taps, uh, fire pit and picnic tables on site. And this site 304 is right beside the highway if you can tell. There are two rustic cabins that sleep five with a queen bed and a double single bunk. The cabin features a kitchenette with microwave, mini fridge and counter space. There's a dining table and chairs. Outside, you'll find a gas barbecue and picnic table. The cabins are equipped with electric baseboard heating. There are no dogs permitted. And there's also wall toilets, yes, between the two cabins. There are four prospector tents that sleep six. Singles over double bunks. They have a sofa table, a nightstand, a table and chairs for six. Uh, they are non-electric. They are soft-sided shelters. Outside, they have a gas barbecue, picnic table and fire pit. Ooh, the clouds, cool. 
Oh my gosh. This is a perfect time for a paddle. 7 p.m. in the evening, the water's nice calm. It's cool. The sun's behind the clouds, making some great images here. Yeah, love it. Even if you never flown before, you can take a chance and try once more. Don't let your worries weigh you down, down, down. You can still take Good morning. It's September second, twenty twenty four. It's a little bit chilly this morning. It's uh, it's warmed up to actually fourteen degrees right now. Um, but we're going to talk about cell phone service for Bell, Telus, Kudo, Virgin Mobile. The service in this park is spotty at best. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter too much as to where you are. Uh, from the campsite, sometimes we get it where we can watch YouTube without any issues at all. Other times, we get nothing. We just get a spinny wheel. We get no connection at all. So. Uh, it really ranges a lot, but I wouldn't be depending on it if you needed to work from here. The boat launch is near the East Campground. Motorboats are permitted. You can also rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards, which are also here that you can take out. You just uh, sign them out at the office. As for fishing, this area is very popular for musky. There's also bass, panfish, and pickerel. It's Cheryl's Lou Review, Lou Review. Let's all talk about Lou. Don't ask Ben, don't ask Jack, ask Cheryl, Cheryl's Lou Review. There are various vaults when it's throughout the park. They can have as simple as nothing, such as the one behind me at the beginning of the trail, to just sanitizer, or they have a running water, soap, mirror, etc. Um, this one's pretty clean. On the most part, they're pretty clean. The one in the main campground is taped off, I assume, probably because it has to be emptied out. There's one that is more of a comfort tea station sort of look. It's at the East End Beach, and that one was more of an Alfred Hitchcock one. I opened the door, and there was drain flies wallpapered all over the walls, so I quickly shut the door on that one. So that one deserves a skunk, people! <laughs> but the rest of them, I, w I will give a flower to. Middle of the road It's just a feeling of a distant melody unknown Lots of roots on this trail. Well, I thought I knew what life was all about. That song had already been sung. I was going on, still minding my own business. Never knew the life had just begun. You came into my life like a sweet embrace, swept me off my feet. Well, we just completed the shoreline trail. We did, and it was probably about a leisurely 45 minutes stroll. Yeah, that was an easy 45 minutes. So most, for the most part, I, it was really very rooty, like lots of roots, so not too accessible, but the section between the main beach and the east beach is pretty flat. It's just a little short bit, but it was accessible. And what you did like is there's access to three different comfort stations along the along way. The way. So no worries there. 
and now we're taking the roads back to our campsite. Yeah, it just it ends at the group camp area, so then we just swing on back. So you can go back the same way you came, or we decided to take the roads. It's a little bit breezier on the road, actually. Yeah, it's pretty humid today. Yeah. We've had so much rain, now the sun is out, and it's uh, really humid. Yep. The Kempville Farmer's Market is open from mid-May to mid-October, Sundays from 12 noon to 4 p.m. So something that we just learned, but probably many of you will already know, is that you can camp along the Rideau Canal at the lock stations. Yeah, very cool. They allow tent camping for cyclists, for hikers, and for boaters. That's mm -hmm. what it's meant for. No car camping, no, no. Right, you can't pull up with your car and unload your tent and stuff like that. They don't allow that sort of thing. But when you want to uh, tent there, it's free. You just go to the lock master at the lock station. They'll direct you as to where you can set up your tent and you can stay there. It's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Lock station that we were just at, they had authentic sites yeah, there. There's two of them. You can reserve those online. Um, now those are uh, uh, completely non-electric, no water, yeah, no. no heating source, nothing like that. But they do have a couple of uh, like uh, two washroom, washroom combo showers. Yeah, at the lock stations. Yeah. And then we saw a dishwashing uh, station yeah, kind of outside yeah, too. Yeah, there's a sink to wash dishes outside. So that's pretty cool. It's, uh, you, can, you can set up a tent there and you can watch what's happening. Smoky Ridge Vineyard right now and it is kind of a rainy dreary day. It is. We have the entire place to ourselves right now. Yeah the, the only other table that had people has just left. So. They just left. So it's we are all on our own. Mm -hmm. Cheryl has a wine flight. I do. And I have a beer flight. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and we're sharing a bread and cheese plate. So I think this place would be really hopping if it was nice weather because it does look very nice here. They've mm -hmm. got a stage uh, for live entertainment, uh, the kitchen. It looks like it's all set up for wood-fired pizza and all sorts of other things. Um, on the menu right now, all they have is the cheese, uh, the, the bread and cheese plate. Lots of cheese, though. Yeah, lots of cheese. We're going to be taking cheese home with us. <laughs> it's unfortunate about the weather for this trip so far. But that didn't stop us from coming. So right, here we, we still are. came because we like our wineries mm -hmm. and breweries. That's right, this has it all in one. Well, it's that time again for Cole's Notes and we are at Rideau River Provincial Park. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of this park? Well, to be honest with you, it was a little better than I expected it to be. Yeah, when you read reviews, you get a lot of, uh, I don't know. And it is right next to a roadway. Now, uh, there's a lot of times that you're right next to a highway. This isn't actually a highway, so it's not as busy as I was kind of expecting it to be. Uh, I remember being at Pancake Bay and having all the transport trucks going by because it's a Trans-Canada Highway. Mm -hmm. So it was day and night, very loud. Craig Leith with Highway 26, same yep. thing. Yep. Day and night, quite loud. 
Actually, Here it's not that bad. Actually, when you think about all the parks we've been to, there's been quite a few that have been close to roadways, even like Six Mile Lake. Mm -hmm. But it's, it wasn't like super bad. Yeah. And every night you slept with your, your the window. Bedroom window. Yeah, open. and I didn't, it didn't keep me awake or anything. So no. it was pretty good. Because it's a, it's a narrow park between a road and the Rideau River, mm -hmm. um, everything is close to the water. Yeah. I like so that. So we're on the opposite side of the road. If you're on the other side, you'd be more... Closer more to visual. the water. <laughs> you'd be closer <laughs> to the water. But I'm just thinking, if you stepped out from your site, you could see the water. Where if from our site, because we're further back, you cannot. That's what I'm trying okay, to say. I, That's what I'm trying to say. I get, get what it? you're trying to I say. Get what sure. I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, it's fairly organized. All the uh, like vault toilets and comfort stations. It's all on the main road in the middle. So I kind of wish there was maybe some vault toilets at the back end of this park, because it's a bit of a hike to get get to the vault toilets and comfort stations. Um, from where we are anyway because mm -hmm. I think we're kind of in the middle of them at either end but um, other than that I like the the loops there it's all organized all the sites are quite private they're treed they're fairly level um, the pedestals seem to be pretty accessible and fairly close there's like one on either side of us which is I'm not used to that yeah but maybe it is it because of how we're positioned usually no, there's I, only one yeah one beach between every two sites yeah and this is one between every site so really yeah there's I think. it's a pedestal with two electrical hookups to be attached to but only one is going to be hooked up to each one so it seems like kind of a waste but so hey we've got a lot of oh, electrical well. yeah <laughs> uh, i think this park is uh, ideal for kids yeah it's very kid friendly there's a lot of families here uh, the playgrounds yeah i think because it is a smaller park and they can just kind of maybe go off on their own Right. So. Yeah. So if you have kids that are of age, that they can explore some stuff on their own. Ooh, listen to that. Oh, eh? that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if the kids can't explore on their own, they just go down to the end of every loop uh, at the water, yeah. and there's the uh, shoreline trail there, mm -hmm. and they take that trail, and it does the whole length of the park, so they can go anywhere they want. They can head down to Main Beach. They can head to East Beach. They can do the playgrounds at either of those places, mm -hmm. and they can have a lot of fun. They're not really going to get lost. No. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that the uh, boat launch is close. It's close to the day use to the playground or the comfort station. Everything's kind of fairly close proximity. Mm -hmm. There's two uh, uh, docks. Yeah. And there's just the one uh, trail, the shoreline trail, which is a nice trail. Just you can't get lost on that one. It's just a straight line along mm -hmm. the water. Now, we're always looking for a place to put our kayaks and paddle boards in. We found that here. Uh, however, uh, it's not like you can go anywhere along the shoreline trail to put in because it's pretty swampy. A lot of weeds yeah, and right lily up, pads. Right up to the edge. And a lot of uh, kind of algae, kind of greeny. So like Jax did go in the water, but it was kind of gross. And he's, yeah. he's, he's a stinky dog now. Oh, he stinks. <laughs> he stinks. From that water. Um, and we even took him to the boat launch. Uh, the one time he got completely muddy, we took him to the boat launch and let him go in the water there. And the whole edge of that is, even if the water is fair to clean, when he comes out, he's got to go through that green algae and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of gross. Yes, yeah, so there's not like a great dog beach area here at all. Well, there is none. There is not, here. no, but. But. Yeah, the forest. The Ferguson Forest. Ferguson Forest, that's it. So it's like four kilometers away. It's got a huge uh, fenced in dog run with like a, a trail through the forest. It's just a small one. And they've got yeah. water and an obstacle course for the dogs. So that's a great, oh, Jack's had the- And on rainy days, oh, they got it. great mud puddles. Yeah, he loved it, along with the other we dogs. kept on trying to stop them from laying down in the mud. We were not successful, no. but we were successful in having them not roll. Because mm -hmm. normally when he finds a mud puddle, he likes to roll in it. So we kept the mud from the chest down mm -hmm. so Wasn't that was bad. good yeah and then when we brought him back to the park we put him in at the uh, boat launch mm -hmm. so that he could uh, get rinsed off but that ferguson go yes what we didn't realize is they have uh, a, a disc frisbee disc golf course there we didn't bring them of course because you don't like to keep anything in the truck just in case so we didn't get a chance to test that out but it yeah. looked like a really nice course so there's multiple trails open. there and the disc golf course, and it's all free. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of green space. Yeah. 
So if, if you are going to do disc golf, you need to have your own discs. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's only four kilometers away, so that's pretty cool. And if there's you also, add that on, if you add that on to this park, then that helps the rating for this park quite there a lot. Are also, a lot of other trails at the Ferguson Forest too. Different, it's a different entrance for the trails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so back here, um, some of the negatives. Um, the water. Yeah. So the beaches, they do have beaches. They're small beaches and they're yeah. sandy, uh, and they're okay in the boy line. Um, but right outside that boy line, it's weedy. Mm -hmm. So it's really for kids to be uh, wading in the water is what it is. You're not going to want to swim outside of that boy line. We went, when we went paddling, we went out where it was uh, much deeper and still the weeds all over the place, right to the surface or just below the surface. Yeah, that's right. But oh. ideal for fishing. Yes, yes, So it is for great sure. for fishing. It's just that we don't fish. Oh, well. So there's no visitor center, no amphitheater, no actual store. Um, it's a pretty basic park. I, you know, more of a long weekend type of place. Mm -hmm. um, and we did buy some firewood here. Yeah, it's bad. Basically, you it's need bad. a blowtorch to try to get it lit. <laughs> yes, it's very um, bad. I saw them with their uh, front end loader coming down where they pick up all the uh, bags of firewood from. Mm -hmm. I think they just fished that from the bottom of the Rideau River. <laughs> I just um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much dripping as they were driving down the street. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, but it was tough wood to, to light. We couldn't mm -hmm. have a fire mm -hmm. with that wood. So yeah, the fire thing wasn't a big hit. <laughs> no, so we're gonna try to find some wood uh, before we go to the next park find some wood at the side of the road, somebody selling some yeah, wood, we'll try and then that. feed this wood into it to, mm -hmm. to help burn it. But we did go into Kempville and Merrickville. Those are two great places to go outside the park if you're looking for things to do. And for cycling in the park, it's just the park roads. Yeah. Uh, I have seen kids cycling on the uh, Shoreline Trail. But it's, not, oh, that was another thing I wanted to, be, to say. But you're not supposed to cycle on the Shoreline Trail, and probably because it's very rooty. I knew she was going to say it. I found this park to be extra rooty. <laughs> like, I need an accessible site. <laughs> like, our site was quite rooty, I found. Well, okay. part of it. But that, that trail, woo! Yeah, a lot of, lot of tree roots on yeah, the trail. Yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta have a good little step to get over those guys. Yeah, and when you have really short legs, <laughs> then you sometimes have trouble. And there's a lot of stumbling. She was often behind me and I just kept on hearing that. Oi! <laughs> she kept stumbling. But there was that little section between the main beach and east beach where it was fairly root free. So yeah, that was good. Okay. So, so for reading. I'm thinking maybe between six and a half, seven. That's exactly what oh, I was. Oh, hello. We have a, we have a friend. Just to be away from my face. Okay. I was agreeing completely. I was thinking six and a half or a seven. Um, at least it does have a trail. At least it has uh, an area Water. that we can put the, the boats in. Mm -hmm. So, it's oh, and, door activities. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So, what do you think? Six and a half? Sure. Okay. Six and a half. We are going to go with a six, six and, and a half. half. Next, what's up? We are off an hour and a half away ish to Silver Lake Provincial Park. That's right. It's another good. highway, another highway park. Yeah, that's right along Highway 7, I believe. Yeah, we don't want to stray too far from it, so we're yeah. on, a, on a roll right now. Yeah, we're gonna do three parks in a row that are right along the highway. That's right. And uh, we'll see you there. See you there. Bye.